Hi, and welcome to rigging part three. So in this video, the goal is going to be kind of taking what part I showed in part two by using an actual T-pose mesh where I built the rig and be able to do multiple poses really quick on a character using the plug-in Transpose Master. So I'm going to start this video kind of halfway between where we we're at with, with part two. So if you haven't watched part two yet, please watch part two before watching this part three, because this is actually a saved project. So how I got to this point, this is where I was in part two, where I have the mesh that is the whole character. And I use the Transpose Master to hit the T-Pose Mesh, if you remember. That's dropping this particular mesh to its lowest subdivision levels, merging it. And I had the Z-Sphere Rig button on so that I could build this Z-Sphere Rig. So all I did was when I was at the point where I built the rig in Part 2, I actually saved out a project of this T-Pose. So I actually used this button, Save TM Project. So I can actually click on this and save this out. So what I'm going to do is now load that TM project, okay, which is right here, T-Pose Rigged. So I'm going to open that, which is the character, and I'm going to see Transpose Master Project data has been loaded. And now I have, I'm back to part two, where I had built the rig and my merge tool after I had pressed this button. So again, uh, I'm just jumping ahead for the sake of time, so please revert back to, to two, part two, to see where I was at with here. So now that I'm back at this point where I have a perfectly rigged character with merge subtools on the lowest subdivision level so that I can transfer whatever rig I'm going to do on here onto this particular mesh. So the first thing I like to do just for me is I like to make sure to go down to rigging and turn my bind on. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the transpose master sub palette. So again, how do I open and get to this over here? So this is your palettes, and it's going to be under your Z plug. So that little circle that you see in the top left there, I'm going to click on that, and that's automatically going to add that, that palette to this tray. So this is my tray on the right, and there's also a tray on the left. Okay, so now I'm going to actually click on my Transpose Master, okay, plug in, and then this little button right here that's highlighted, layer, I'm going to make sure it is highlighted. That's actually going to tell ZBrush that when I, after I've posed this character and I click on this button, the T poses sub T, if you remember, it's taking the merged rigged character with the pose and applying it to the character that has subdivision level, sculptural detail on it, and individual sub tools. So I'm actually now also going to do one other thing is I'm going to open the layer palette on my actual T post character. And I'm going to make a new layer. If you notice that if I scroll over the layer, I get two little sayings that say pose and target mask. So if you can see, I can actually use a layer to store a pose on with my rig. So let's do that. So I'm just going to do something simple. I'm going to switch myself into the rotate mode. And let's just move her arms up so it looks like she's doing kind of a, a jumping jack. We don't need to get anything really great. I just want you guys to understand this concept because by the time we're adding this part of this video, we should really have a great grasp of what rigging can do for you and how, how great it can be for you to pose characters quickly. So I clearly have a pose. So I'm under the layer. It's automatically in record. Now to take myself out of record, you just click to the right and that turns your eyeball on. If I want to put myself back in record, I click to the left and then I'm back in record. So coming out of record again, I'm going to click to the right of record and I'm out of record. So now this is actually a layer that's saved. So now I want to tell ZBrush, hey, you know what? I want you to apply this pose to the character that has multiple subtools with sculptural detail. So again, we're going to click on this little button right here, T pose the sub T. ZBrush is going through looking at all the subtools. It's applying the changes I made on my rig to my sculpted character that has the multiple subtools and the sculpture on it. And the beauty of this, if you notice, I just made a layer. Okay? So this is what this little button's doing. I'm now on the character that has multiple subtools and it's been sculpted on, and that pose is matching what I did to this character. So now I have one pose, and I can say, you know what? I'm going to make another pose. So now I can turn off the layer 
and walk up and down my subtools. So how I'm switching to my subtools, you can either click on here and walk and click on your subtools. I'm actually using the up and down arrows. So I'm using the up arrow to walk up my subtools and of course the down arrow will walk down. So if you notice the character is going to snap back to a T pose. So now I have a layer with a pose on it but now it's off. So what I can do now is go back to my T posed mesh that has the rig. The first thing you're going to notice is my layer is gone. My layer is not actually gone. When we apply this posed mesh to the character that has multiple subtools and sculpted detail, we have to put the character in a preview mode. So because we're using Z spheres, we're going to go down to adaptive skin. And if you notice that little preview button is on, I'm going to turn that off and then you're going to see your rig again. Okay, so now that I have my rig back on in kind of like my edit rig mode, I'm now going to go to layers and if you can see, I see a layer now. Okay, so I want to get back to my original T pose position, which was a neutral pose because that's what she's sitting in right now. All now I have to do is turn off my layer and boom, there my rig automatically snaps back to the original neutral pose because I made a layer. So let's make another layer and make another quick pose. So now I have another layer here. And remember when I go and put myself in rotate and I click on the rig, the character is going to snap to what I'm doing with the rig. So it's really great to be able to do this. So let's, let's throw another quick pose on this so you can see what we can do here. And I'm not trying to make any dynamic pose. I just really am making this to, for, for you to explore and discover what you can do with this rigging. So no, that's a little extreme. So let's say that looks good. I'm going to turn my record off. Again, click to the right of record. I'm going to go up to Transpose Master. And I'm going to click on the T-Pose, the sub-T. So now, if you notice, I'm applying now that new pose to this character with multiple subtools, multiple sculpting detail, and everything's being adjusted and changed for me. So now if you notice, I have two layers on this character, and I can turn now multiple poses on and off. So here's the second pose I just did. I can turn that off and turn on the pose that I did where she looks more like she's in a T pose. So I can continue this process and just now I can go, let's put her back to a neutral pose and make a third pose. So all my subtools have all the layers off. I'm going to go back to my T pose mesh, which is clearly labeled by T pose. I don't see my layers because right now I'm in preview mode. So I need to go to adaptive skin, come out of preview mode. My rig will come alive again. I'm going to go back to my layers. Now you see we see our two layers. I'm going to turn off that second pose I did. You'll see my rig snap back to the neutral pose. Let's make a new layer. Always make sure to make a new layer. If you don't make a new layer, you'll never get be able to snap back to your neutral pose. And this is why I'm making this new layer. So now we can continue to make a whole nother pose. And again, she's going to snap right to the rig automatically for me. I oh, broke her kneecap there. Not such a good pose. So we, you can see what you really can start doing um, dynamically, changing poses and figuring out what kind of character pose you want to put something in. So rigging has so many capabilities. So now she's, uh, she's dancing. So now we have three poses. So again, I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to go up to Transpose Master. Remember, I'm clicking to the right to turn the eyeball on. I'm going to go here to my Transpose Master. Click T pose to sub T, and you're going to notice we're going back to the sculpted character with multiple subtools, and it's automatically creating a whole layer for me and putting now this pose on me. So I just showed you within a couple minutes how I can have multiple poses and then turn them on and then turn them off and look and see what pose I really want to do with the character. So this is really what I wanted to show you for step three. So we just took the combination of using Transpose Master with having the layer button on to apply multiple poses on a sculpted mesh with multiple subtools and having multiple different angles and poses.